vintage Spotify streaming radio? Why, yes, I'll have one. It's alive! <laughs> Despite the doubts and the uncertainty, we have emerged victorious. All right, enough of this hoisting of my own petard. Let's finish this project up. If you want to see all the steps, components, code, and more, you can visit the project page at hackster.io. And we want to thank hackster.io for their support. That was pretty sneaky, wasn't it? So far, we got the audio going, we got the LCD connected. Now let's add some physical controls. Keeping in tune, pun intended, with the retro radio theme, I thought it'd be cool to add physical knobs so that you could control the volume and turning the Raspberry Pi on and off. The natural solution was to go with the potentiometer for the knobs. However, potentiometers output analog values and Raspberry Pis only really read digital values. So we'd need to connect it to something like an Arduino to convert those analog values to digital. So searching around, I found that a better solution would be a rotary encoder, which is very much like a potentiometer, but it outputs digital values. The rotary encoders I'm using also have a push button functionality as well. So taking inspiration from this Mod My Pi article, I was able to connect up the rotary encoder to the Raspberry Pi. Then I wrote this little Python script to control the volume through the MPD client. And again, you can find a link to the full code at my hackster.io project page. Now turning the Pi on and off can be a little bit tricky because you kind of want to shut down the software first before completely killing the power or else that could damage the software and the electronics. So I've decided to use the second knob to trigger a software shutdown or reset and then you can cut the main power using an actual switch. We'll cover the switch part a little bit later. So this time taking inspiration from the gilyes.com website, here's how you can connect the rotary encoder to your Raspberry Pi. And then you can follow their steps to clone their code to your Raspberry Pi and set it to auto start. So now whenever you press the rotary encoder knob, it's gonna reset the Raspberry Pi. And if you hold down the button for a few seconds, then it's gonna shut down the Raspberry Pi. That should just about do it for the hardware. Now let's move on to the software. To auto start Mopity with the Raspberry Pi, you want to enable it through System CTL. And if you have any issues running it, you may also want to copy over your configuration file that we created. Secondly, we need to auto start the LCD so that we can immediately start showing images on it. So to automate those mod probe commands, you want to edit this file and put these two lines of code in it. And then you want to edit this file and put this line of code in it. Now for the shutdown code that we downloaded, the website had a good suggestion of turning it into a service by creating a service file like this and adding it to the systemd slash system folder. And you can also repeat this exact same step for the volume code that we created, turning it into a service as well. And there's one more important piece of code that this radio has to have or else it just ain't gonna be worth it. And that is the code for the cover art. I was able to cobble together this code that downloads album art of the current song that's playing and pushes it to the LCD screen. So this is very, very basic code. So please feel free to look at it, add to it, and help it out as much as you can. So you can just clone my code directly from GitHub and then also create a service for it as well so that it can auto start with the Raspberry Pi. All right, we got it all running. Now let's figure out the power. So I grabbed a thin 2500 milliamp hour battery pack from online and took off the casing. I removed this little USB charging cable so that we could extend the wires on it and add an on off switch to it. Then I also separated it from the battery itself so that I could extend those cables as well to position it better within the case. All right, honestly, that part was pretty simple. So now we've got our rickety Frankenstein all working together. Time to give it a facelift. So you guys helped me decide on a nice little vintage radio case to go with, so I knocked out a little CAD design and then 3D printed it on my 3D printer. Then to give it a nice hammered metal look, I gave it a nice coat of textured spray paint. I left some holes in the side of the case so that you could still connect stuff to the Raspberry Pi even once it was inside of the radio. 
So now hopefully everything will fit nice and snug inside the case and whenever you flip the switch, it should all come on. All right guys, if you want more information on this project, more details and stuff that I may have forgotten to mention, please feel free to visit the project page on hackster.io. So now I'm gonna take this project and put it in a nice old Tinkernut style video. But please let me know if you like this behind the scenes Tinkernut workbench series. You can vote right here. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, or donating at tinkernut.com slash donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.